Hi boys and girls, our book today is about dinosaurs. A lot of people thought dinosaurs were way bigger than what they really are. Our book today is called How Big Were Dinosaurs? And it's going to tell us exactly how big those dinosaurs were. This book is by Lita Judge. How big were dinosaurs? Stalking, running, stomping, crushing. When we think of dinosaurs, we think of huge monsters. But how big were dinosaurs really? Microraptor was a deadly hunter, but he would barely be able to look a modern day chicken in the eye. The truth is, dinosaurs came in all shapes and sizes. Protoceratops had very large skulls and heavy beaks for ripping tough plants. They were strong and built for defense, but no bigger than a baby rhinoceros. And honestly, with a name like Leonosaura, you'd think these dinosaurs were tree-eating giants. But they stood only two feet tall. They lived through the cold, dark winters near the South Pole, where emperor penguins live today. Even Velociraptor, a dinosaur that filled our imagination with its flesh-ripping claws and powerful jaws, was the only the size of a dog. Struthiomimus were the perfect size for going to the races. With slender legs and long tails, they were built like a very light horse and ran just as fast up to 35 miles an hour. Ankylosaurus was a little taller than an SUV, but weighed four times as much. Built to withstand attack, they were covered in armored plates and sharp spikes, and they had a great bony club for a tail. Imagine being stuck in a traffic jam with a cranky Ankylosaurus. Stegosaurus weighed as much as three cows, but with bony plates on his back, that could be up to three feet long. He looked much bigger. Bigger isn't always smarter. This giant plant eater only had a brain the size of a walnut. Like a giant unicorn, Tisanosaurus had a strange spike growing out of its skull. We don't know what this spike was used for, but with a dinosaur-sized appetite and hundreds of teeth, he could have gobbled your garden in a few quick bites. Torosaurus had a 10-foot skull and horns that grew as tall as a first grader. You wouldn't want to make this dinosaur do something he didn't want to do. Their Cynosaurus had claws that grew up to 36 inches longer than a man's arm. But don't worry, these plant eaters most likely use their claws to strip bark off trees and pull down branches. Tyrannosaurus rex had a skull nearly as long as a man is tall. He had strong jaw muscles that could crunch down with 10 times the force of an alligator bite. Imagine cleaning the nine inch long teeth of this fearsome meat eater. But even the fierce Tyrannosaurus Rex was no match for the biggest, most enormous, colossal giant of them all. 
Argentinosaurus as long as four school buses. This dinosaur is probably the biggest animal to walk on land. A full grown adult weighed more than a herd of 17 elephants. An Argentinosaurus was an incredible 45,000 45, times bigger than Microraptor, but the largest dinosaur was only dangerous if you were a tree. Argentinosaurus must have eaten them by the ton. Dinosaurs really did come in every size, as small as birds or bigger than herds and everything in between. Hi, so for our snack today, we're going to do digging for dinos and it's going to be dirt. What we need to do is we need to put a little dino at the bottom of our cups. And for this, we, one important thing before you get started, you want to make sure you use some wipes. So, so we're all clean on our excavation. And we're going to start off with making instant pudding. Have you kids ever made instant pudding before? It's really a simple thing to do. It just requires two cups of milk and a box of jello pudding that says instant. So we start off with milk that I have kept refrigerated in my cooler, which is important when you're out in hot weather. I have my measuring cup and a shaker. You can use any type of shaker, but this one works well. It's a plastic container with a screw-on lip. I put the milk in first. One cup. Up to the line. Whoa. Sometimes you get a little carried away. <laughs> and two cups. Then you put in the pudding. Tear that open. I put the pudding in second because it won't clump to the bottom this way. Get all that in there. Screw the lid on tight, and then you have to shake it about one and a half to two minutes. So we'll let Spencer go ahead and tell about the rest. So while she's shaking that, we so we'll pour that on to the bottom. But our second layer is in the Oreos that are all crunched up. And what you do for that is you need Oreos, of course. I like the double stuff. You get an Oreo, and you just take a mallet like the mallet you used before or any tool that can smash those up. So you'll just go ahead and smash that Oreo in the little pieces. And then once you get your Oreo nice and smashed, if it doesn't work, you can just kind of take a spoon too to smash that all up. You'll have your second layer and your other layers for that. So now her pudding's done. So we unscrew the lid. It isn't set up yet, but it will be in a few minutes. Just a little bit in each cup for starters, covering the dinosaur so we can do the next layer. Now when she has that poured, our next thing to do is just scoop some of our Oreo right into the cup. So we'll just kind of scoop some right into our cups here. Do a couple little scoops. 
And then once that's all scooped we in, we do round two with our pudding. The pudding sets up pretty fast, so you have to kind of work fast on this. And if it doesn't come out, you have to get a little help from your spoon. Okay, smooth that out. Okay. okay. And then our last layer again is going to be some of our Oreos. So we'll put some more Oreos on top. Nice Oreos. This one that needs a little extra there. Okay, and then when you have all the Oreo and you have all your layers and you feel good about it. Of course, you need to have a little dino right on top. He's going to go digging for his dino friend. That is how you make digging for dino cups. And there, Spencer, is your treat for a hot summer day. Thank you. it'd be fun to do a little excavating of our own and one way we did that was to put our miniature dinosaur you could put anything that you wanted into a balloon and then we filled the balloon with water and put it in the free tied it shut and put it in the freezer overnight then the next morning found that we had our dinosaur encased in ice. So we had to cut off the balloon, pull it off, and then we could pretend that we were excavating for our dinosaur through the ice, or we could pretend like that was dirt, soil that we were trying to remove. Now, how are we gonna get that dinosaur out of the ice? One way you could do it is to just spritz the egg with warm water. That would be slow because then we'll have to wait for him to melt. Or to speed up the process, we could take a little bit of salt. Remember in the winter when you put salt on the sidewalk to melt the ice? Well, salt will melt this ice also. So we can do a little bit at a time. And you can see as this is starting to melt, part of the dinosaur is becoming exposed already. Or if you want to try something a little more active, you might try chiseling the uh, dinosaur out of the egg. So I went out to my garage and I found a mallet. It's nice and soft, so if you do accidentally hit yourself, it won't hurt as bad as a hammer. And I found a nail. So you'll just put your um, dinosaur egg in the cup and you can chisel away. And as you chisel, pieces of ice come off. And as you get down closer to it, your dinosaur will come out. It's just kind of a fun activity in this beautiful weather to do some ex excavation. You can see how the salt is starting to melt the egg faster now. It's kind of cracking the egg as uh -huh. well. It is. And on this side. The other activity you can do is you can make your own fossils. A fossil is just the remains <laughs> left of a dinosaur and um, it's kind of the imprint left in it. So we'll have the recipe for some Play-Doh. You just take your Play-Doh and you put it out on your um, wax paper, parchment paper, cutting board, and you roll it out a little bit. There's two different ways you can do it. You can take one of your um, dinosaur toys and you can press it in the Play-Doh. And once you take it out, you'll have your fossil. Just the 
imprint left of the dinosaur itself. You could use make a fossil for anything. Shells or other plastic toys that you have. Absolutely. Plants. You sometimes see ferns uh, fossilized in a rock. Or you may use cookie cutters to cut out the shape of the dinosaur. You could even make cookies with the cookie cutters, dinosaur cookies, and decorate them. It's kind of another fun activity. Let to do. this dry out. Or, yes, use it and go. And you could, once it's dried out, you could also paint your dinosaurs as well. So a lot of fun activities to keep you busy during the summer. Happy excavating and happy fossil making.